And welcome to a special and exclusive Capital Tour coming to you from the steps of State House and Tebe. That's right, and it's a program we hope will have an impact on the future of Kenya and the region now more than ever. I'm Jeff Quinang. Now, you know why we're here. That's right, because my guest today has literally just been sworn into a new five-year term of office. That's why we're here. But you're probably wondering, why is Uganda in the news for all the wrong reasons? We want to find out why is it that opposition leader Kisa Besja keeps getting arrested and why he keeps wanting to walk to work and many other things. The importance of Uganda in the region. With my guest today, who's been in power for 25 years, he's got a new five-year mandate. This man, he has a vision for this country. He says he wants to take it to the 21st century and beyond to become a middle-income nation in just five years. Sit back, folks. We have the president, the incumbent, the man newly sworn in. It's his first interview since the swearing in. President, you're worried. Kaguta Museveni. Mr. President, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Very fine. It's the first time we've done an interview in the dark like this. Well, this is not so dark. <laughs> it is well illuminated. It is. It's wonderful. And, and you know, we appreciate your time, Mr. President, because we know you, you're busy and you've been busy the last few days. But let me ask you this, Mr. President. The headlines these days about Uganda, despite the good things that are happening, is Dr. Kisa Besije being arrested, being pepper sprayed, being dragged out of his car because he wants to walk to work. Why not let the man walk to work, Mr. President? Well, the proof of the uh, correctness of the police stopping him from walking was only the other day, on a Thursday, uh, he had agreed with the police that he would uh, drive to Kampala in one hour so that the road is clear for other people. But deliberately uh, spent almost nine hours or something like that on the road and uh, as a consequence, some of our visitors were th pelted with stones. During the swearing in? No, after when they were coming mm -hmm. on the road to Entebbe. At the swearing in, there was no problem. Right. It was on the road to coming to this side. So that's the reason why the police say, no, if you want to walk, coordinate with the police. What's the problem? Mm -hmm. So that you agree on the routes, you agree on the on the venue and he didn't want to do that he didn't want to do that because he, he wants to instigate riots so that people can steal people's property and so on why are you turning him into a martyr mr president you, you you're, this man's career was over after his his third loss in three tries he was finished for all intents and purposes now you're reviving his career well i don't know how, how it will revive his career because if he doesn't stop uh, he will uh, face the law of Uganda, and I don't know how that will uh, build up his career. Mm. I, I don't see how. He seems to be going around the law every time. He's given bail. He announces he's walking again. Every time, every well, time. Well, the, the law is a bit weak, uh, but that one we are going to strengthen the law. We are going to strengthen the law so that it doesn't allow these games. Uh, but besides, even under this uh, present law, if you are given bail uh, and you don't fulfill the conditions, that bail can be cancelled. And if he fulfills it like he's been doing, and then he goes out and walks the next day? I mean... No, if you walk, then you are not fulfilling the, the conditions. You are not. Yeah. Uh, I think the court in the end will have to do the necessary. Yeah. Mm. At the end of the day... Uh, Mr. President, you know, you two were once very close. He was a colonel, you were a general. You were very close. Can't you resolve this like two gentlemen rather than the ugliness that makes it to the international networks? Well, we have no problem with the, uh, any of the groups. We always work with the bring back people who had uh, gone away. We have no problem, but uh, that must be discussed. And... Uh, when we invite them to the interparty dialogue uh, forum, they don't come. 
so they're just trouble troublemakers. Mm -hmm. They don't want a solution. Dr. Best, you can sit in Nairobi and call your government illegitimate. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? It's not fair, uh, but uh, that's how they are. Uh, they are. That's, that's where their character is. You seem to be taking this very well, Mr. President. I mean, anyone else would be really angry. Yeah, but uh, why should I be angry? That's, that shows who the, who, who, what sort of people they are. Uh, and uh, in the end, the law of Uganda will catch up with them. So you're not worried that he is, he is literally he's taking over the headlines here. He's, he's being made into a martyr, a hero. No, we are not worried because uh, if you want to be, uh, you cannot be a martyr for doing bad things. You may end up being a villain. Yes, you can't be a martyr for demonstrating in the markets, uh, causing small people in the markets to lose their uh, properties through riots. I heard they were stripping uh, women in Kampala naked you are not going to be a hero that way yeah but then when the international media portrays it that way and they turn around and call you a dictator what do you say what do you tell them well the international media is uh, not serious or maybe they have their own agenda but in the end the people of uganda are the ones who decide they're the ones who vote it's not the international uh, people who vote and uh, the people are losing their goods in the markets. There is a roadside market on the way to Entebbe here. That day of Thursday after the swearing in, when I was driving this way, I found they had covered their fruits because they know that when the message just has these walks of his or this blockage which he created on the road, uh, that is a uh, the beginning of looting their uh, small uh, provisions. So they, they, they had covered, during the day, they had covered the, uh, the, their fruits. When he, when he takes over the airways, when he's making all these headlines, does that take away from your focus, the vision that you want for this country? Is that taking away? No, it can't. It can't, but we must deal with him also. Uh, and we deal with him according to the law. Because for us, we just follow the law. Even if we know he's in the wrong, but we don't have enough evidence, then we, 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 we hold on. But ev evidence will pile up, and uh, the law will catch up with him. Yeah. Mm. But um, at the same time, there's some bookmakers who are saying what's happening in North Africa, in Libya in particular. Uganda could be next. If they don't like the leader, if they're not happy with the leadership, you never know what they can do. The European countries. Yes. <laughs> I think they will push their luck too far. If they think that uh, they can come and attack the people of Uganda, I think that they will be pushing their luck a bit too far. Look what they're doing in Libya, Mr. President. Well, they may do it there, but uh, if they come to attack us, uh, they will know that... Uh, uh, Uganda can be defended by its people. <laughs> so, so you're not worried about what the outside world thinks? Oh, well, I, I'm, of course I would like the outside world to understand us. Uh, but it is their duty to understand us also, as much as, as it is ours to understand them. If, if they allow themselves to be utilized by crooks, or if they want to utilize... Uh, crooked groups here in, in Africa, then they, they would be the ones to blame. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so there are those who say, because you've discovered oil, you have plenty of oil in Lake Albert, plenty, which you'll be refining here, I understand, right? You'll be refining yeah. locally. There are those in the West who say, now this man is becoming arrogant. Oh, but the oil is our oil. Uh, it is not anybody's oil, so uh, arrogant about what? They say now he doesn't need our help. Like before, you know, African leaders, you go with a begging bowl, you say, give us help. Now you don't need the help. Well, Uganda was going to be self-sufficient, even without oil. We're already funding 70% of our budget. 
and uh, if we improve our tax collection, we can fund all our budget without oil. It is a question of just marrying the economy correctly. Now with oil, of course, we shall have more, more money. So uh, why should this harm anybody who is looking for uh, his own legitimate interests? They should be happy because if Uganda has got more money, then maybe we shall buy more Japanese cars, we shall buy more machines from Europe. Why should they be unhappy? Yeah. Mm. But you insisted that that oil be refined here. You, do, we don't, you don't export it and have it brought as refined. No, we shall, we shall refine it here. Mm. It will be refined here. Mm. How is that going to change the landscape of this country? Well, Uganda is already changing. Uh, the, the, the idea, the, the, the plan is to modernize Uganda. Initially to become a middle income country but also in the, in the medium term to become a modern country. What are we talking, Kuwait, Qatar? Are we, what's the vision? We, we are talking maybe over South Korea, more, more ambitious than Kuwait and, uh, and, uh, and the other one, Qatar. Yes. Mm. South Korea? Yes. In what, 20, 30 years? Maybe 30 years. Maybe 30 years. Is that why it's important for you to be here at this time right now? Because what? No, 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 I will not be here for another 30 years. But <laughs> I will not be here for another 30 years. But we, ha we had uh, our benchmarks, which we are uh, in terms of strategic objectives. Uh, one of them was to liberate the country. Secondly, to stabilize the situation. Uh, and, 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 and achieve minimum recovery of the economy. The third one was to uh, start uh, social programs like education. We now have about 8 million children in the primary school. We have 1.5 million in the secondary schools. We have 120,000 students in the university. And if you see where we started, we had only 5,000 students in the university in 1986. We had only 190,000 students in the secondary schools. And we had only 2.5 million in the primary schools. So one of our objectives was developing the human resource, which we are developing. We are now building infrastructure. This is one of our next objectives, as you heard me say, electricity, uh, uh, but the other benchmark is the East African cooperation. Uh, we were able to revive, together with Muzei Moi and Muzei Mwinyi, the East African community, uh, the other leaders who came after like Mr. Mukapa, like um, Muzei Kibaki, also helped. We have been joined by Rwanda and Burundi. Uh, and we are aiming at the East African Federation. And I asked you this the last time, Mr. President. Will that happen? Is that going to physically happen? I hope it will happen. I, I hope we shall start in the next five years, because that's what we have agreed with our partners. So these are the benchmarks that uh, keep, keep us in uh, active politics. But you played your part till now, Mr. President. You've, 25 years is, is enough time to give you credit. Why do you want to subject yourself to this again the 25 years is we're achieving certain things but if you have not achieved the the, <coughs> the bigger price why should you abandon it we, we call that a desertion i'm not a deserter mm -hmm. in the military no mm. <laughs> so how can we desert our cause Unless we give up, if we come to the conclusion that it's not achievable, then that would be a different story. But if we think it is achievable, we should not desert. You, you refuse to give up? No. Mm. But I will not have to be around for 30 years, because by that time, yeah. by the next 10 years or so, it will be clear whether we can achieve this or not. Then. Uh, okay, so you give yourself a benchmark, 10 years? Yes. Um, maybe, we shall see, but not 30 years. <laughs> Definitely not 30. No. No. <laughs> but 
do you get do you wake up sometimes and and feel you know what this this is too much for me this is this is too much you don't feel appreciated enough it doesn't matter because i'm not working for i'm working for myself i'm, I'm not working for other people i'm working for uh, my grandchildren for my children uh, I want to talk more about that. We're going to and unfortunately, there are enough people who appreciate. That's how I win elections. So that outweighs those ones, those ones who criticize. Absolutely. All right. Let's talk about that after the break, Mr. President. What keeps you going? Also, there's still people who say 25 years is a long time. It's a long time. You know, give it to another new generation. But you, you've explained to you, but I want more of that after the break. We are the steps of State House and Tebe, folks. It's exclusive. It is a special one with the president. His first interview since being sworn into a new five-year term. Don't even think of going away. The bench is back in a moment. And welcome back to a special edition of Capital Talk on the steps of State House. And Tebe, that's right, for the first interview since President Yoweri Kagute Museveni was sworn in to a new five-year term. We're talking issues, we're talking controversy, we're talking oil. Sit back, folks. This is exclusive. So, Mr. President, if you hadn't discovered this oil, because I know you, it was big risk sending explorers all those times to explore for that oil. If you hadn't, what would you be thinking about? the vision of this country. Uganda is rich enough without oil. But everyone says it's the oil. Now. Yeah, they are just confused. Because they concentrate on the, the extractive industries <coughs> and they for, forget the real wealth of the country, which is, first of all, the human resource. Secondly, agriculture. Agriculture is a, is a great wealth. It is renewable. So, as far as I'm concerned, uh, oil is just uh, an, an additional um, opportunity, but it's not the main one. The main one are the people, agriculture, industry, services. In many African countries, oil is more a curse than a blessing. How is Uganda going to avoid that? Because we are very well organized people. Uh, we have got a history of resistance. Uh, there is no way oil can be a curse to us uh, because we are, we, are, we, are, we are capable people. We can defend it uh, legally, politically, uh, and even militarily if it became necessary. So there is no way it can be a curse. It will be a blessing. Now that you've begun this new five-year term, Mr. President, are you hitting the ground running? Are you determined you want to, to carry this country forward? Is that, is that what you want to do? Yes, yes. And uh, our programs now are mainly electricity, the roads, the, the railway, uh, the education, health, scientific research. You keep talking about electricity a lot because, let's face it, without electricity you cannot develop. No, you cannot. And this is part of the problem in Africa. People have been neglecting this. Not only here in Uganda, but even in other countries. And how much do you want to build that capacity? Oh, but there are international standards which you can... Uh, there is what we call kilowatt hour per capita. You find here in Africa it is very low. Uh, some of the countries, are, it is as low as 8 or 12 percent or 10 percent. But in the United States, it is 12,000. So we should look at those comparable figures, maybe a kilowatt hour of 5,000 at least. That would be decent. Yeah. Congo is a country that could have produced all that with their river. But because there's so many conflicts in one country, they cannot share that potential. The problem has not been only conflict. Even countries which have never had conflict, they have, they have not uh, developed electricity. So I think it is more orientation 
awareness of the importance of uh, of electricity mm. Mm. leadership yeah. is that another thing that is lacking on this continent is that what's pulled us back well <coughs> there are good leaders but i think the problem has also been the problem of uh, the technocrats the technocrats in africa are they seem not to be well informed and probably they don't advise their political leaders because some of the political leaders may not know uh, how much electricity is needed but but these uh, technocrats should know and they should inform, uh, inform these leaders but they don't here i had to discover this problem myself yeah. uh. is your worry kaguta museveni a good leader you said lead, some leaders are good well that is for others to to, to judge, not for me. Mm. But some people judge it. Some people say no. That's up to them. Mm. But as far as Uganda is concerned, more than five million say yes. So that's what I care about. That's all that counts. So are you going, will you eventually talk to this opposition man? Because in the end, it has to be settled as gentlemen. Or else, or are you sworn enemies? But, but what are we settling? There's nothing to settle now. Because unless we are talking about the future, maybe some amendments in the, if they have got some issues about uh, uh, election regulations or what, that's what we can discuss about. But uh, our program is our program. That's what we, we were voted for. That one we are not going to discuss with anybody. We can inform them. We can. Uh, sensitize them if they want, the opposition. But we shall implement our program. But if he keeps saying that your government is illegitimate, when if he doesn't recognize your government, you know, he's slowing things down. Well, he, he will not, uh, it's not for him to recognize. He's not the Supreme Court. Because the Supreme Court is the one which could uh, reject the results with, with, with reasons, with very good reasons. So, whatever he says is irrelevant. Uh, but if he tries to frustrate the government, then the government will take action. He's really, I mean, I'm sure he's tried to frustrate any, in any government right now. He's, this is major frustration. Jumping bail, going back in the streets, telling people, let's go to the street. Isn't that frust frustrating the government? It is, but it will end. It will end with uh, him answering to the law. So we are not we are not worried about it. Do you think he thinks he won the election? No, he's just lying because he knows. Because uh, they even carried out, to, even before the election, they carried out, to, uh, what do you call this, uh, a poll, mm -hmm. many polls, mm -hmm. including the one author uh, authorized by the opposition. And we were winning all of them. Uh, so how could he be... He's not, uh, he doesn't believe that he won, but he wants to, I think, to sabotage our program. Mm -hmm. uh, but it won't work. Uh, so there must be some problem also with the, his appreciation, his, uh, his, uh, his uh, analysis. Because this is not the first time. Uh, every time he's ma making outrageous statements, this government will collapse uh, b before the end of 2010. It didn't collapse. Mm. Would you call him here for a cup of tea one day? Talk to him? I don't mind. I can meet anybody. It is my job to meet uh, any Ugandan who wants to meet me. Do you think he wants to meet you? I, I, I'm not bothered either way. The, 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 the issue is that he must stop making trouble for, 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 for Uganda. But how much can your government keep taking? That's the question everyone's asking. How much can you keep taking? Because we, we follow the law. We arrest this man. We put, take him to court and then the court releases him. Then if he makes another mistake, we, we, we take him back. Uh, but I think in the end, even the court will say, no, you are breaking the bail. Uh, or we shall get stronger charges which we shall put on him because the, the more he goes on, the more mistakes he makes. Mm. 
But we are also going to amend the constitution to provide for uh, no bail for certain offenses, including murder and so on, except if the 180 days are, are exceeded, uh, where bail becomes uh, necessary. Mm. What are, how else are you going to change the constitution? What are the bills or how, uh, what are the amendments are you going to introduce? No, no, this is one of the, ma of the major ones. Uh, otherwise, we don't have uh, any other uh, plans. Are you looking forward to this new term? Are you looking forward to the next five years? Yes, yes, it's very exciting because we, Uganda has uh, some money now. We are, we are able to do our own programs for roads, for the power and so on. So it's very exciting. Because in the past, we could not plan because we didn't have the money. Even if you planned, it, you depended on the donors. That was very constraining. But now we, we, we have a, quite a bit of our own money. And with the oil, we shall get more money. So it will be very, very, uh, very interesting. In the past, Ugandans looked at Kenyans as big brother. Now we'll be looking towards you guys as, as the new regional power. Uh, no, I am not in the business of finding out which pigment is, is slightly taller than the other one. Uh, I'm not in that business. The fact of the matter is that Uganda, uh, Kenya is um, uh, still an, 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 an underdeveloped country. Uganda is. Uh, so we should aim at much higher than uh, being as tall as the next pigment. So not... Uh, is that why this East African cooperation is very important? Yes, 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 yes. But also uh, transforming the, the individual countries like Uganda. Likwa, you wrote a book from third world to first world. That book is very relevant here. In each country, sh each country should go from third world to first world and then we cooperate as, as developed countries. And Lee Kuan Yew was a benevolent dictator, remember that? Yes, I, I, I hear. Mm, mm. So maybe that's, that's the kind of person it takes to drive from third world to first. Well, I may not have to be a dictator, but I, I am firm in what I, I believe in. And that's what you need at the end of the day, firmness. Absolutely. Mm. Mm, without fear or favor. Absolutely. Uh. <laughs> what was the best part about the other day, the, prom, the, the swearing in? What was the best part? Because... Some of the presidents kept you waiting. Huh? Let's admit, they kept you waiting. Mm. I have no problem. A host normally waits for, for his guests. I have no problem at all. Mm. You always have an answer for everything. <laughs> What's the most challenging part uh, to of this new term? Other than BCG? No, BCG is not a challenge. You will be sorted out. There is no, nothing much that we can... Now that we have got our own little money, really things will move. I, I don't have any problem, any major problem that we cannot solve. So next 10 years, you'll be around, but not 30? Mm, I, I, I've not even talked about the 10 years. Certainly for the next five years, I will be around. <laughs> then we, we, sh we shall see what happens next. Okay. Mm. Mm. We'll keep coming to visit you. Thank you. As long as you want us here. You are most welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. you Ugandan President, you're wearing Miss Seventy. I tell you, he has an answer for everything. I tried to extract it. <laughs> but he does have an answer. And he has a vision and a goal for Uganda for the next 5, 10, 20, 30 years. He says, Lee Kuan Yew wrote that book, From Third World to First. That could apply, does apply here in Uganda as they move forward. Folks, it's going to be a fascinating week. This was President Museveni's first interview since being sworn in. There will be plenty more. He's invited us back anytime. You can be sure we'll take him up on that. What a guest. What a show. What a week it's going to be on the bench, folks. You simply cannot find guests like President Museveni anywhere else. But right here on the steps of State House in Tebe on the award-winning station, K24, where we are from Rachitura to Entebbe. We're still all Kenyan. <laughs> All the time. Thank you. Very good. Very good. <laughs>